Hello, this is Professor Flynn joining you again, and here we want to go over the basic steps of analysis to determine whether you have a copyright issue in an international text and data mining project. So assume for the moment that you are trying to decide whether you can locate a particular research activity in another country in which you have a research partner. And so in this part of the course, we're going to walk through what different copyright provisions you can expect to encounter in those other countries. And then in a later section of the course, Professor Sag will walk you through how to determine which country's law is in effect or would apply to that particular activity. And we'll discuss together how to um, minimize your risks in engaging in those activities in different places. So in order to begin um, this part of the lecture, we want to begin to map out what those different TDM activities, what I call on this slide TDM needs, might be. And you can see there's a link up at the top. <coughs> and I want you to cut and paste that link and follow it, and it will take you to a Google Doc with these same categories. And we're going to use that Google Doc as a worksheet, a place where you can keep notes through these lectures. So what we want to do is identify the different needs that you may have, and then identify the exclusive rights within copyright that may apply to those different activities. And then finally, which exceptions to exclusive rights might apply to those possible exercises of exclusive rights that you need for your research. So I've jotted down a few um, a few activities that I believe the TDM researchers need. So first, of course, you need the rights to create a corpus or a database of works. And normally that includes reproducing whole works. So the first need is to reproduce whole works in order to create a database or a corpus. Second, you may need to share that database with other researchers. So here I'm assuming you're not trying to share the works themselves with the broader public, as we'll described throughout the course, that probably directly implicates copyright everywhere. But if you were just sharing it with other researchers within a close group of connected people, then in many places that might be lawful as well. The very purpose in the third row of doing text and data mining is to find and report facts that you discover through your TDM activities. So is that process, is the exercise of analytical processes of computational research to find facts from works, is that implicate exclusive rights and what limitations and exceptions might apply. And then finally, I assume that you may need to quote the materials that you're mining to purposes of validation or illustration for publication. This might not be a closed list. I invite you to think about other activities that you might need that might implicate copyrighted materials and add them to the worksheet. And think about whether one or all of these activities either needs to take place in a different country or needs to take place with some kind of cross-border exchange. So let me um, show you the worksheet that I want you to use. So here is the version of it. If you follow um, that link that was on the previous slide, it's also located up here if you want to write it down. So it's a tinyurl.com um, web link, and so you can just type after that worksheet TDM and make sure you capitalize TDM and it should pop right up. So how do you use this? This worksheet is created so you can't edit right into it. The purpose is for you to make a copy of it, and the way you do that is to click on this share button right here and make your own, oops, sorry, I went to the wrong place. That's how you share it. Here's how you make a copy. So go to uh, File, make a copy, and then when you do, please share it with the same people, and then it should share with me automatically. And that should give you a new version. It says copy up here. This link will no longer apply. You can write your own name in there. So this is going to be Sean's copy of TDM worksheet. And once you've done that, both you and I should both have access to it. And so I can retrieve it um, later to see your responses. So go ahead and fill. Next step is just to fill your name and organization so I know whose um, worksheet this is and can follow up with you. And then during the lectures, I'd like you to be taking notes directly into this worksheet. 
So when you hear me talk about exclusive rights that may be implicated in any of these activities, go ahead and just jot it down. And then when we come to possible exceptions, go ahead and jot those down. And then I've left a category for notes. You can put anything you want here, but one of the things that we'll be looking at is which groups of countries you can do lots of these activities in, which we're going to call green countries, some of these activities, which is blue countries, and then restricted activities. So it's going to be yellow and red countries. You could jot down some of those um, identifiers in the notes if you want, or any other kind of uh, complications that you find. And then finally, when we get to the end of all these lectures and before the live lectures, I would love if you would answer these two questions that will lead us into our discussions. So first, as I mentioned in our introductory, what would be the possible benefits of a universal rule in this area? Some kind of a treaty that, that required countries to permit the sharing of TDM materials across borders as long as it was just between researchers, not with the general public. And finally, I would love to hear what specific activities you engage in that might involve either an international or a cross-border partner uh, that may involve copyright materials so that we can have some kind of case studies and examples in my mind as we go into the live discussion. And then, so once you've done all that and before the live discussion starts, just make sure that you've shared this, this um, uh, worksheet with me. And this is my Gmail address. So you can just cut and paste this, copy, and put it in the share. And if you, it should already be shared with me. But if for some reason that doesn't work, just go ahead and put my address in there and hit return, send and that should share it with me because I would love to read these before the live lecture if I can, uh, before the live discussion if I can. So if you could give them to me as soon as you can before the live lecture, I will read as much of it as I can before the live lecture, um, but it will certainly help me to understand better where you're coming from uh, within this process. So that completes um, this just kind of introduction to the worksheet. So I would encourage you to keep this worksheet open as you go through the rest of the lectures and just fill it out as we go along. And I think it will help you better understand um, the substantive materials of the course. So in the next lecture, we'll start actually introducing that substantive material.